Okay, my YouTube people, going on today in Raps Garage Shop is the rebuild of a Myers E47 plow pump. Before you start this rebuild, I recommend that you get the manual, and I got this free online just doing a Google search. I also have a E57 to do. I've never worked on one of these before, but I don't think it's all that hard. Now, the E47 I already tore down, and I don't have a video of that. I'm going to show the video of the rebuild, which should really help with the tear down. This one's an E57, and I am going to tear it down, and I'll do a video of the tear down and the rebuild on this one. But basically, both of these are somewhat the same. You have the pump motor and the pump section. You have the hydraulic lifting section, and then you have the solenoid valving section. They're all three separate sections that connect together to pump the oil, control the flow of the oil, and then the ram to do the actual lifting. Okay, the first section I'm going to start with is the pump section. Now, this is the pump. The gears go in here. Here's the bottom piece that goes on it. What you don't see on this video is the hours of cleaning that I did. So some of the things you want to check when you take this apart is that there's no scoring on here. These gears sit in here like this and rotate around and if they get metal in them it'll score this aluminum real bad or you can get scoring of your bushings. Um, also with the, the housing the same thing you want to check for scoring real bad here. When you're checking your gear you want to check your shafts to make sure your shafts aren't showing a lot of wear. Um, these aren't showing much wear at all. They're in really good shape. And then you want to check both sides of the teeth on your gears to make sure that there's no pitting or the hardness is coming off of them. And, and you can see on these, you also want to check this flat surface where it rubs, rubs up against the aluminum. With as much water that came out of this pump, it's surprising these gears are in excellent condition. So you can kind of see without even looking that one goes through and this one is what goes up and connects to the bottom of the pump motor. This gear goes in here, it's the through, and then your pump motor bolts here. And this gear sits in the pump motor like this. You just wanna take and make sure that your pump motor turns free. Now, I don't have the top on this, so it's not gonna turn super free. As you can see, I need to clean the brush surface up and then put it back together. The brushes look like they're in real good shape. I'll be using the Myers oil when this pump's finished, but for now, for assembly purposes, I'm just going to use some 10 weight fork oil. First thing I'm going to do is replace the seal that goes in here. And I had to buy that separate from the kit. That seal part number is 51581. So I just find a socket that I think fits it the best. This one's a little bigger, it's a three quarter craftsman. And the 18 craftsman 18 millimeter craftsman fits it about perfect but i'm going to start it with the one that's a little bit bigger the other thing when i'm installing a seal on the outside ring of this metal i like to put a little sealant on them so if there's any per imperfections in the bore that it takes up that imperfection and they don't leak i'll be using the uh, mono seal gasket maker that's fuel resistant so I just take a little bit like that, and this stuff tends to spread out. There's probably way more than I need it. And there you have it. Now I'll just tap it in. Now that the seal's in, I just take and wipe off the excess of the sealant. Make sure there's none in the rubber lip seal. Okay, the first section I'm going to start with is the pump section. Okay, with this portion of it, this is a pressure regulator. There's a sleeve in here, and I did take that sleeve out and clean it, but I also put it back in. It kind of presses back in. You don't necessarily have to take that sleeve out, and I'm sure you can see it. This pressure relief needle goes in. It has a slight bit of a score in it. It's not too bad. doesn't really catch my fingernail. So I'm not overly worried about that, but you can kind of see it. Here's your adjustment screw, and that goes in here like this. And you can see there's an O-ring here, and there's an O-ring there. 
and there's these metal washers that go over the o-ring so I'll replace both of those and the kit comes with those so it kind of goes like this and like I said this shaft goes in to here like this and goes through that seal so I want to make sure I made sure that there's no burrs on here for that seal to catch on and then also I want to lube everything real good so I want to lube the seal Make sure the oil gets all the way around that seal. You don't want to cut it going in. There's no burrs on this. I just ran this on a wire wheel to clean it up. If there's any burrs, you want to take a file and lightly file them off of the tip here. Just want to make sure I get everything with some oil. And now I'm going to install that. I'm just going to give it a light little push while I'm turning it. There it is in. It's tight because the seal's tight. Again, go give this some lube. Next, I'm going to install my my opposite one. There were no markings on these gears to indicate which one went where. Next, I'm going to install my locating dowels. Just want to give them a little tap in, make sure they're all the way down. Is my o-ring plate and you could see that there's two gaskets that I need to install for that okay so if you watched any of my other videos before you know I would like to use o-ring lubricant on any o-ring that I put in and this one will be no different I use this Dow Corning 55 o-ring lubricant and I already coated the o-ring with it so as you can see I have both o-rings installed and I have the o-ring grease on them I have the divider plate. I'm going to put that on top of the one O-ring here. It's down now. Just want to make sure my pump gears are still free, and they are. Now I'm going to put the upper plate on, but before I do that, I'll put a little lube again on both of these shafts. Okay, now I got both these bushings lubed up real good. I'm going to take a little extra lube, pour it down into this pump. I did put some markings on this. I have two dots here and two dots here so that I made sure that I got the cover in the right spot. Now I'm going to bolt it down. A 5 16 18 bolt. Before you torque it down, you just want to have these bolts snugged up a little and then rotate your pump to make sure everything's in alignment. And then you want to snug it lightly. Gets about nine and a half foot pounds of torque. Now it's all torqued up. I'm going to put the pressure regulator circuit back in. Install it. I'm going to hit it with a little oil down in there. Don't ever want anything running dry. Next on the uh, manual pressure regulator, you want to put an O-ring on each side of the adjustment nut. Then gets this washer, goes over top the O-ring. When you're finished with this and adjusting it, in is going to raise the pressure out it's going to lower it it's going to bring it down till it touches lightly to the spring and that's about right there or so it's about right there it's going to lightly put the put the cap on for now
and there is how you have the pump section rebuilt one of the last things I'll do is I'll pour some oil in here I don't want to put too much in but before I bolt it up I will fill this the best I can to prime the pump I'm going to turn it and I'm if you're looking down at it I'm turning it clockwise the bigger port is always going to be your supply and the smaller port is always going to be your discharge and it's that way on any pump I'm starting to see it come up the discharge we'll just keep going and here you go you're seeing it come out so this is how you could test your pump before you even put it in to know that you have it right and it's pumping so the pumps all primed okay I went ahead and pulled the pump motor apart I took a little scotch bright and cleaned the shaft on both ends and I took a real fine piece of emery and cleaned off the copper for the windings then I take a light pick and just make sure to go across into each one to make sure that no copper goes from one to the next now if that's all clean I clean the housing I cleaned inside where the magnets are and I clean the bolts up a little bit I'm going to grease both ends of this with a little bit of wheel bearing grease that'll keep the water out I hope and also keep it lubricated the side of the housing that's recessed about an inch is where the brushes go the opposite side has a notch in it for this cover and this cover has a notch that goes in it like that and then there's paper gaskets on each end the paper gaskets still on this end I'm going to put a little sealing on it and then I'm going to put a little sealing on the paper gasket on this side I don't have replacement gaskets so that's how it's going to have to be the output side of this electric motor that goes to the pump had two shims that go on here the armature goes in this way the side that's recessed about an inch where the brushes go is where the copper side of the armature goes and the output side is the side that where the magnets are right up against the edge okay first I'm gonna put the paper gasket back on the housing now I'm gonna put the housing into the greased bearing I'm gonna line up the notch with the notch here so it can slip on nice and easy okay now I'm gonna re-put it in since it got sucked out of my hand Okay, and you can see it's on tight and the armature will push down in there but the magnets are pulling it out for now I'll set that aside now I'm going to put the pump onto the electric motor lining it up that's how you rebuild the electric motor and pump section of your Myers snowplow lift pump I'll end up filling this with oil before I mount it back to the next section and I'll show you that when it comes the next thing we're going to work on is the ram assembly and this is the ram assembly housing and you can see there's a lot of discoloration down in here although I soaked this and cleaned this really good both sides kind of have some stuff that's just not going to come out of this and that was because there was quite a bit of water in this and probably over the years it's just damaged it other than that it is spotless clean and uh, let's get to it I put this seal in upside down you can see it looks like it would normally go this way to keep oil in but what actually this is tapered in this way it allows water to get in and this seals to keep water out I did buy a new Myers seal and it's part number 05119 and the seal looks like this it has this metal piece that's kind of loose in there and then the lip seal which again goes in on a diagonal the top being the widest and further in being narrow and it goes in with this piece up to keep water out so I'm going to remove this seal and install this one the proper way okay before I put the seal in I put some of this gasket maker that's fuel resistant on the outside of the seal make sure it takes up any imperfections in the housing I put it in this way with that little metal spacer facing up but you want the lip seal to be facing up 
the very bottom of it closest to the housing would be the widest section and then it tapers tighter as it comes to the top and that'll keep the water from coming in. I'm using a socket to tap them in with. I like to put an extension on them. It helps me to keep it lined up straighter. Okay, now I got it in. I like to put a good coating of oil on the seal to help it slide on. Also make sure to wipe off the extra sealant. And there you have it. Next thing I'm going to do is put this thicker, I guess, nylon o-ring back in this side like that it didn't come with a new one so I'll just reuse the old one and it's in good condition had to get a new ram because this one was pitted this ram was probably pitted from water no doubt and had a big scratch in it and there's also an o-ring that goes on it right there here's the new ram now I'm going to assemble this end where the seal goes okay if you know me I already saw that I put O-ring lubricant on the O-rings. This is the O-ring that goes on the tube. This O-ring goes on this end of this shaft. Being careful these shaft threads are sharp. Being careful not to damage that O-ring. Next goes on is this brass piece and the taper goes down over the o-ring then goes on your rubber sealing rubber and that goes over top of this brass piece like that next goes the next brass piece that sits down over it what the book says is if you can see the cloth material then it's bad and you can see cloth where the rubbers went away on my old one Next it gets this lock nut and I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a punch through this end and then be able to tighten it. So it gets tightened like this. As it's coming on you just want to make sure that it's going on that rubber and you can just kind of feel it and see it. It's just kind of sinking down on everything. And you can also look from the top and see that it's centered very good around that nut. Okay, now it's tight. This is what it looks like. Next, you have to put this ram into its tube. And I'm going to put some hydraulic oil on this. So that it helps it slide in. I'm also going to put some hydraulic oil into the ram to help it. Next, the ram goes on and in. going to help it with a rubber mallet. Now I'm going to insert a little further by putting a socket on it. Okay, let's see it's in. This end goes down into the body with the o-ring. I'm going to set the o-ring in the rubber in the body. You can see the o-ring in the body. And then I'm just going to slip this onto it. I'm going to coat the rest of these O-rings in this O-ring grease. I'm going to put the large O-ring for the cylinder on to the body. I'm going to put the other O-ring onto the lid. I have the O-ring in the body for the cylinder. But before I do that, you have to put this washer on. Okay, there's a screen in here that goes into this hole here. I clean this very good. It just pushes down in there. Next, this plastic piece goes here. And I'm going to put the studs in and they'll hold it in place. I like to take a small player of pliers and just snug them in a bit. You don't really want to pull up on them. Just want them bottomed out. Don't want to put any marks in them or anything like that. I got new nylocks for them. They're fine thread, 5 16 fine. Or on this shaft, you get this washer, and the book shows that the notches face up towards the top. You have this hard rubbery plastic 
piece next. We'll put a little of that O-ring grease on this lip just to help insert it. And this is what that looks like going in. Next, you're going to get the cylinder and the top cover, and I like to put some lube on the O-rings before I insert them, of course. Next is the cylinder. That just pushes down over the O-ring. Get this piston back in that lower O-ring. You want to make sure that you get the fill hole up near the front on this so it's not hard when you have to fill it. Start it down over the studs. Again, I just want to make sure I have that in that lower O-ring. First, I'm going to put the washers on and then the nuts. Okay, now that I have washers on them, I'm going to tighten them up. I'm only going to get close to starting to tighten down. I want to go down evenly, so I'll put a little on each one. These do not need a lot of torque, nor do you want to torque them real hard. The O-rings provide the sealing. You just want to take them up until they're definitely snug, but not over tight. Because those long studs will be easy to break. That's how you get the cylinder part back together. Your fill plug, but it's also a breather. You can see that hole right there. And you want to put some Teflon paste on this. I'm just going to set it in loosely for now because I haven't filled it. I'm not going to put any Teflon on it. We have to start out by installing the three studs here with a little bit of Loctite. There's a square cut o-ring that goes here and some kind of check valve that goes here. Little o-ring grease on the square cut o-ring. In this port you put the spring. You put the check ball. You put this piece in. That lip goes up because it gets a square cut o-ring on it. And the check ball sits against it like that. Okay, I was able to slide that on. And it was a little bit of a trick, but I got it all on with the square o-rings and everything where they're supposed to be installed. So I'm going to bolt it on and then we'll go to what's next. The next thing I'm going to install into the main piston assembly is this solenoid. And it's this smaller one with the black wire that goes into here. And in the kit I bought, it's AK431, plow parts for you. And this has this O-ring here, this O-ring here, and that Teflon split, uh, a Teflon split O-ring. They'll all go down in here. So I take it off like that. Next the O-ring, and you can see right there where that O-ring has been cut. On here, probably doesn't pick up on the camera, but it is cut right there. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Then this screen lifts off, and you can just check it. I'll probably clean it a bit more. And then this bigger O-ring here. Now I put the old O-rings in one spot over here and I keep the new ones on the plastic. Now I'll just give that a clean out. Now I'm going to put a little O-ring grease back on the O-rings. Okay, now the screen. Now the O-ring with a little O-ring grease on it. And now the Teflon split ring. Now it gets installed back into the housing bore. And now a 7 8 deep socket. The solenoid. And before I put the nut on for this solenoid, I'm going to put a little Never Seize on it because I had a hard time getting the other ones off. Now 
Now I'm going to do the solenoid block. You can see that's all pitting. That's from water. There's no change in that. Can't get that out of there. Next I'm going to build this assembly here and it has this sliding piston. The pin part goes down, the fat part goes up. And I have the washer and the nut. I put this in, pin down. I put o-ring grease on the o-ring. I'm just going to put it in loose for now. Now I flip this over. It goes in on the bottom side of that. Same valve we put in. It goes check ball, spring, and then o-ring on the Allen, the Allen bolt. And that looks like this. Check ball, spring, then the Allen. I'm going to leave it all in loose at the moment. Now I always want to check and make sure that this piston is able to push up on that ball. It has a ball mark on it there as you can see. And it is, it is spring loaded. Not sure if you could see that, but it is spring loaded. So that's together right. Now, before I final some of this, I want to put some oil in there. Just a little lube so it's not running dry in the beginning. I'm going to leave this all loose for the moment. I will tighten it up. So the next thing I'm going to do is rebuild the solenoid for the E position. That's the one that's furthest away from these two fittings. It also has the white wire. This is the solenoid portion. I'm going to replace three O-rings on here. These are the three O-rings that were on there already. The packet for the O-rings for this solenoid are BK432. In that packet were four O-rings. I only need three of them. I believe I need this one this one and this big one okay now I have them greased up I'm going to install them one installed Okay, and this goes in, the spring goes down, then the ball, like that. You see where this ball sits in there. You can also see where the nut was seized onto this threaded stud and it broke off. So I'm just going to put a little silicone on that to hold it on and it'll basically glue it on. I'm going to set that to the side and build the next one. The next solenoid is the one that goes here has the green wire and this one has four o-rings on it one two three four and they also have teflon backup rings so this is important on this it goes back up o-ring back up o-ring o-ring back up and the manual shows it that way also the kit for rebuilding this solenoid is ck433 so you can see in these kits, there's some extra parts. They're for multi-fit, depending on which model you have. So we'll just match them up to the ones we take out, and then we'll know what O-rings are the right ones. Okay, there's the solenoid with the, all the O-rings may removed. We'll give it a quick little clean. One thing I want to point out with these backup O-rings, that these were rubber. And they're square rubber. The replacement ones split Teflon rings. So now we'll go back together after I put some O ring lube on these. Looks like that's the extra one there. It's a little bigger than this one. There they are lubed. Now I'm installing them. The first one gets the backup, and this one's this one's not a split backup. I'm just going to 
get it up here and just kind of get it on like this and the o-ring now the next o-ring and the backup next o-ring now the backup again I want to point this out because it's really important when installing from the bottom it goes back up o-ring back up o-ring o-ring back up now this can be installed this solenoid I couldn't get off of this I want to address an issue that I was told on the internet with my first video before I put in this edit is the C solenoid the one with the green wire that goes here the solenoid valve that's here won't come out of the electrical solenoid here and this is an example of one that did come out my guess on the reason that that happens is because when you ram snow it causes this to swell my guess on the reason that that happens is the kickback of pressure causes that swelling of this piece so in that case this needs to be replaced and if you can't get your solenoid off then you're going to have to replace both now I was able to get this solenoid off this one but it's tight right there and when you really look at this you can see down here at the base is the original size so I have two of these on order one for this one and one for another one that I'm doing since I have one good solenoid I only need to order the valving part but for this one I need to order the solenoid and the valve because I can't get it apart okay so I got the replacement for the solenoid and just want to show you the diameter and it's basically 625 again when I check the other one you can see it's 655 and um, even down here it's closer to 660 so the new solenoid the solenoid valve won't fit on but on the new one slips right on no problem and even the old solenoid slips on no problem I'm just going to install that it comes with new o-rings and I'm just going to put that in and then slip the solenoid on this is for this adjustable valve that's right here this is an inserted part on this video because I posted this video and and got called out on the internet for it because I didn't pull the last valve out of here I made this tool here and this is a file folder clip and I just took off the clip off this side straightened it out with a pair of pliers you fish it down in here and I'll show you it after I get it out you can feel it hook into a into a hole into that valve and I just took a pair of pliers and and then popped it up and out it comes and you can see it has four holes right there and I just got in them holes with it like that there's an o-ring that goes on here and an o-ring that goes on there here's the larger o-ring here's the smaller o-ring okay to get this o-ring back in it does fit on the end of this valve perfectly but you want to drop it in and then I have a 10 millimeter punch you want to make sure it's set down flat at the bottom of that bore I'm unable to show you that on camera but it is flat in the bottom of the bore next you have the next o-ring you drop it in because if you don't the threads will cut it again I'm just going to place it down to where it seats like that it's down where it's supposed to be now I'm going to drop this in skinny side down if, of course I cleaned it again I'm going to just tap it into position and you heard it click down in now I'll reassemble the rest of it I want to go through this because there's a lot of parts and it's important 
So you can see that pin goes there. That Teflon gasket goes on top of the shaft of the pin here. The O-ring goes over top of that. This piece here has a step in it. And that smaller step goes up in the end of this, this retainer here. This one you could see goes onto this pin, but it also has a step and that step faces this direction, both of them do. And that step there goes up in the end of this spring here. This goes on top of the spring, which goes up into this piece. And then you have this nut, that's your adjustment and an O-ring on the cap. I'm going to assemble this and you'll understand how it goes together. So first you take the pin and this Teflon O-ring goes right up on it and there's a little taper here to help it. Then this O-ring goes over top of the Teflon. When you assemble it together it's easier to see. This one goes on the end of this barrel like, like that. Now this pin goes in it and then this one goes here on the barrel so that the spring can keep it. So it should look like that when that part's done. You put this flat up into there, and then this goes like this. And you can see how it all sandwiches together. It just kind of slips right down into that, and then you just press it lightly with the end of my finger, and I can feel it all slide together. Then the spring goes in. And then this sleeve that the spring goes through and now this piece goes on. Now I'm going to tighten it down. After I have this fully assembled, I like to take something like a screwdriver down in here and just make sure that it's able to travel back and forth like it's supposed to. You can see it's not a ton, but it's there. Now I'll put the adjustment screw back in. Once it's all the way in, it was out a half a turn. And I originally took it apart, so I'm going to put it back there for now. Then the cap with the O-ring. Okay, now I'm going to check to make sure this spring has some give. It does. It sure is tight. Take and install this. I'm going to come out one turn until I can get, be able to set it. Put the o-ring on and there that's done now that's the completion of this block next i'm going to mount the block to the rest of the pump and ram so before i can mount the block to the ram there's three o-rings that go in here that i'm going to install okay got the three o-rings installed now i'm going to install the block on here it goes on like that and it does not have a gasket nor did it have one. However, I'm going to use some of this motor seal gasket maker. Okay, I have the seal on this side. I'll put a little on the block because it's, it's pretty pitted. After thinking about this a little more, I don't believe that there's anything down in here. I believe everything is contained within these ports that have the O-rings, but the sealant won't hurt it. I am going to put never seize on the bolts for these because they were pretty tough to get out. I'm going to take them wipe off the excess of that sealant. These are tightened with a quarter inch Allen wrench. last thing we're going to do is install these three o-rings on these three nuts here that go to the drain and two of the filters as always i put some o-ring grease on them the filters go in with the feet down and this plug piece sticking up like that and then you just put the caps on. You can see I have a quite a bit of O-rings left over that I didn't use. 
One other thing you should do to give this thing a rough test before you put it back in is test to make sure that it sounds like your solenoids are moving. I get a 12 volt power source. I connect one side to the body and that's ground. I happen to be using my 12 volt battery charger, but you could use a jump pack. Then I'm going to take the positive lead and connect to each one of these solenoids and then make sure the solenoid mechanisms are moving. You'll hear it. That's the green wire. Next is the white wire. You can hear that one. It's not quite as loud, but it is moving. And then here's the black one. That's a good test to let you know before you put it back in that everything seems to be working okay. So when you're finishing the motors installed, it's a good idea to give it a quick check on the bench. As you saw, I have oil in the pump and I don't want to run it very long, but I do want to run it to make sure everything turns free. And you can hear that it does. And this is just with a battery charger. This thing doesn't have a lot of current. Of course, I'm going to fill it with the Myers plow oil. They say it has extra cold weather properties that are good for these things. Once a year, you should drain them and then refill them with the oil. Anytime after rebuilding one of these, before you connect it back to your plow system, you want to get all the oil out of your rams that are on your plow. That could have a lot of water in it, and you don't want that water coming back in here. At the end of the season, I'm going to drain this again and then refill it and run it and make sure there's no water in the system. And that's how you rebuild one of these Myers E47 plow pumps. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.